Good morning, my name is Molly Tenbrook. I want to thank you all for joining us for our webinar. Today's webinar will focus on easily managing your libraries and components. Before we jump in, I would like to give you a brief introduction to Trilogic and what we do. For over 30 years, Trilogic has provided software and services enabling engineering groups to design, develop, and deliver products through excellent support, training, and consulting services to help you achieve success sooner. Oasis Sales has been a mentor premier partner for over 16 years. Their industry knowledge and experience make them uniquely qualified to understand your business and how technology will make their customers successful. As you see here highlighted on the map are the regions that each Oasis and Trilogic cover. Make sure that you're subscribed to our YouTube channel as well as Oasis YouTube channel. You can either search Oasis Sales or Trilogic and make sure that you're also following our other social media channels like LinkedIn, Facebook, and Twitter. Thank you for that, Molly. The topic today is easily managing your libraries and components. Wouldn't it be nice if this process was frictionless and smooth? I'm sure this is something we would like to approach in terms of component management, but it happens to be very hard to achieve. There are many friction creators in the electronic product creation process. For example, just finding the component information. We need to be able to make intelligent design decisions about which components to use and get these new parts released into a company system. You might have inaccurate data. Data may be obtained by someone then copied over and over again, sometimes resulting in libraries with bad part information. Bill of materials generation is always a problem, making sure that the bomb is correct. Often some system of version control or file management is also needed. Document management is always a difficulty. Where are the documents kept? In addition, how is all the data that you've created in the design process uploaded into your company product release system? And lastly, collaboration and manufacturing partners. These all can create friction during electronic product creation. The friction can create conflict or problems in the design process. We're gonna talk about some ways you can simplify the process and maybe get a little closer to frictionless so we can avoid this from happening. First, let's go over some terms. In discussing what is in a component library, we will divide it into something we'll call CAD-specific information and component information. CAD-specific information, for example, is a schematic symbol, a layout footprint, and the connectivity between them. In other words, how do the pins on the symbol connect to the pins on the actual footprint? And then there is component information. But this is the parametric data the value tolerance, voltage or power, et cetera, for each unique component. Very often you'll have a company part number which acts as a reference. There also may be the manufacturer and the manufacturer part number information and possibly a link to a data sheet. This aids in the creation of a correct bill of materials. You can also have a reference to a simulation model. We have two flows that are supported in the pads environment. In the netless flow, there are separate libraries for the symbols and the footprints. The information about components and the connectivity is maintained either in the pads layout library or the properties on the symbol are as it is defined in the schematic which allows automatic creation of a pads part library. So as you can see here in pads designer, symbols are placed on a design and the other component information is added onto the symbols in the schematic from a corporate database. This is the data that makes a symbol into an actual component. Then the pads part type can be automatically created referencing a separate decal library maintained in pads layout and then loaded into the pads library. In the integrated flow, there's one central library and that library defines both the symbol and the footprint. It also defines under a part number the connectivity between the symbol and the footprint. That central library makes it easier to maintain consistency between your schematics, your footprints, and your part definitions. For example, you can see here that a symbol or a part placed on the design from the central library references not only the symbol, but the footprint and the connectivity information as well. You can also place symbols independently and define the connectivity information at a later time by selecting a part number. You can see here that we are also using a corporate part database. It is possible to maintain the co component information in a central library, but that's storing component information in a CAD library where it is much more difficult to maintain. For that reason, we recommend the concept of a separate corporate 
parts of the database. This is where Databook comes in. Databook allows us to parametrically search the corporate parts library database in to find parts to add to the design. It simplifies the access to a centralized database by multiple design teams. The engineer can quickly search for and easily locate parts based on the parametric data, and it can also be used to verify data in the design. Databook provides a link to the component data and easy access to the component information. This allows the corporate database to be customized to the needs of the engineer and also facilitates access to the company's PLM, MRP, or ERP data. Some people ask why we don't just use the data directly. Often the company information maintained in an MRP system is not the type of information that you need for engineer. Databook, Databook allows a link to a database which is customized to the needs of the engineer. It uses a standard ODBC compliant database interface so that it is very easy to interface to different forms of data. There are three primary uses of Databook. The first one is parametrically search. It's to be able to parametrically search for the place either generic or unique components on the schematic. I don't have to know exactly what part I want to place before I make a decision. I could just place, for example, a 10 microfarad capacitor, uh, which is what I'll actually show you in the demonstration, and decide later the specific part. The second use is to verify that the schematic component information is complete and correct. And lastly, the third is to enable easy access to other component information that is not on the schematic. Some people ask, where should your libraries be stored? It is interesting how many companies there are with, with each engineer having their own library that they maintain. We recommend the use of a common library, both for the CAD information and the component information. If you have multiple sites that are not easily networked, you can have a master library that can be mirrored to other locations. And we actually have customers doing this now. Now, where can the component data be stored? Because it links to an ODBC compliant database, it can be as simple as an Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheets can be used as a basic table-based database. Microsoft Access is also a database utility. It provides a basic graphical user interface for managing component information, but it's very generic. We recommend that you use something customized specifically for electronic component information like Omnify. This is a system for not only maintaining the component information, but also effectively managing that information. What is Omnify? It is a business ready system set up so that you can start customizing it and using it right out of the box. It provides an audit trail for any changes that you've made to the component information. And it has a workflow engine providing electronic sign off which can be used for the creation and release of parts and bombs. It is a browser-based collaboration platform, which means you don't have to have any other client running on your machine to access it. You can set it up to allow controlled access to design or manufacturing partners. It can be easily integrated in different ECAD or MCAD systems. One of the areas where we would like to reduce friction is the component research and selection process. Components are the building blocks for any electronic design that you may be doing. We need to weigh multiple trade-offs and consider not only the functionality of components, but also their cost, Rojas compliance, size, availability, second source availability, et cetera, in making our decisions about what components we need. They must meet particular system performance requirements and specifications. We may need a symbol and footprint to add to the CAD database. And we want the parametric data to be loaded into our corporate database. This can be done with the use of ParkQuest. ParkQuest is a tool supplied by Mentor Graphics that answers many of these needs. ParkQuest is a web-based component research tool that uses DigiKeys, search tool, and in many cases enhances the results with symbols and footprints in Mentor Graphics format. Additionally, via ParkQuest, Customers have access to open source and manufacturer specific reference designs featuring schematics, layouts, and libraries for popular designs such as Arduinos and others. Parametric searches can be defined by the customer to easily search for and identify devices. For example, customers can define searches based upon manufacturer or by a specific package type. 
Many of the parts are augmented with symbols and footprints in Mentor Graphics popular formats that can be used with the design schematic and layout products. Once identified, symbols and footprints are integrated into the actual design flows and updated with the manufacturer and distributor part information. Here's what part quest window looks like. As you can see here, we are searching for a 10 microfarad, 10 volt, 1206 package capacitor. It comes up and lists all the parts that are available and information that is available for these parts. This includes the DigiKey part number. Any part can be expanded to display advanced information about availability or purchase price. In many cases, the Mentor Graphics formatted symbol or the footprint can be downloaded as well. If the symbol or footprint is not available, there are wizards built into ParkQuest, such as the symbol wizard you see here. The pin information can be entered manually or uploaded from a .csv file. Pin graphics can be defined automatically for the system you're using. Here you can see the table that was created for this particular part allowing the customization of the symbol. Then the symbol will automatically be created based on this definition. There's also a, an IPC 7351B footprint wizard built into ParkQuest, where different specifications from the data sheet are used to automatically create the footprint or decal needed for a particular design process. Fill in the necessary information from the data sheet and a model preview is automatically created. The user creates a package using the footprint creator. Then the program analyzes a package and creates an IPC 7351B footprint. If you're using Omnify, there are also other component research capabilities available to you, either through Octopart or Silicon Expert. The automated interface for these particular tools are built into Omnify, allowing you to access many parts and automatically populate your database with information for those parts. In some cases, it can maintain a live link to the online database. We're gonna show you that as part of the demonstration. To demonstrate library component management in Databook, we will start with a blank design. I go into the Databook window, open a database query, and select the capacitor library. I'm interested in adding a 10 microfarad capacitor to the design. First of all, I want to consider only released parts. So I start out by setting the status filter to released, and then set the value filter to 10 microfarad. This results in eight choices for the design that I am working with. I'm going to add this symbol as a generic 10 microfarad capacitor, not defining it as a unique part at this time. For the second capacitor, I'm going to add a unique part, reviewing all the information available and deciding which one to use. Because the data book database I'm working with is an Omnify database, I have what's called an object link. That allows me to access all the information that's available in the database to help in the decision of which part to use. I log into Omnify and then quickly review the attributes associated with this part, documents such as the capacitor or compliance data sheet that is stored with the part and also the vendor information. This helps me to make the decision of which component I want to add to the design. After reviewing all the information, I decide to select the top one. When I add the symbol, all the properties are annotated. You can see over here that it's got all the properties needed to define it as a unique part. The first one that I add is generic. Its properties only indicated that it is released and has a value of 10 microfarad. Now I take the uniquely defined second symbol and make a copy to define a third capacitor. So now I've been able to add components from the data book, either adding generic symbols or unique parts, and all the information that I needed to make the decision was right here, accessible from within the designer windows. Let's say that I work on this design and I decide that I want the third capacitor to have a value of 12 microfarad. So I change the value property in this design, but I haven't changed any of the other properties. That means 
this part if we generated build materials would actually use the wrong part number and we would not be generating a correct bomb. That brings us to the second use for Databook, which is to verify that the component properties in the design are correct and complete. I select the third capacitors and go over to the icon on the left to run a live verification. Three different results are reported. One is green, indicating that the component properties are correct and complete. One is yellow, which means that the symbol is missing some information or there are multiple possibilities in the database. And then one of them is red, indicating no match. I double click on the yellow one and decide that this is the component that I want and annotate the properties onto the schematic. Now that indicator is green. I go back to the red one, double click, and the issue there is a little different. None of the properties seem to match anything in my database. The red indicates that the value property, 12 microfarad, does not match. If I remove that particular condition, what you see is that all the other properties match a 10 microfarad capacitor in the database. But I wanted a 12 microfarad part. So I am going to remove all conditions and search for a 12 microfarad capacitor. The result comes up blank, indicating that there are none in the library. What I need to do now is research for and create a new part in the company library. For many companies, there is a process for making such a new part request. Because with Omnify, we have the Silicon Expert plugin, I'm going to use Silicon Expert to do the research and add the part to the database. I go to the tools menu and select my custom link to the Silicon Expert search. I log into Omnify and then log into Silicon Expert. You can see here, I can set up my search. I know the manufacturer I want, so I enter Kemet. And then I search for not a part number, but instead enter just 12 microfarad and run the search. The query has come back with a long list of possibilities. I could then go in and narrow the search, research individual parts, and come to a decision. In this case, for simplicity, I am going to select the first one on the list and then click on check or create part. This will automatically create a new part request within Omnify. You can see here that one of the properties values from Silicon Expert have been automatically mapped to three of the Omnify properties. There are other properties that I can translate over and there is a mapping function which would allow the automatic mapping of other properties or I could manually do it if I wanted to. I can also select documents such as data sheets to be included with the new part request. I click on create associated item slash part, opening that Omnify new part request window. I select the category capacitor, which automatically invokes the settings and rules for capacitors. There are particular fields required. The value, voltage, and tolerance fields have been populated from Silicon Expert. For the ECAD symbol, I am going to enter the generic cap symbol name. For the attribute package, I will enter to be determined. The part number is going to be automatically assigned, so now I have entered all the information needed to create this part. I click on create item. The next part number is assigned and the part is created. It's added whatever attributes with the values assigned. It also has added the vendor information and the documents that I selected. What it's also created is a sign-off workflow or a defined step-by-step -step procedure for the new part request. I go ahead and approve my initial request for this part and I've started the process. Let's go back into designer now and search for a 12 microfarad capacitor. Now you see the part that I created is immediately available. You can see that the status of this part is listed as preliminary. I can annotate the newly created properties onto my symbol. Now all three indicators on the left are green and I can continue with the design. I use the object link to go back into my Omnify, log in, 
return to the sign-off window. The CAD development sign-off is where the package footprint will be resolved. I complete the sign-off in the engineering review step and go back into the general tab. I have a release button here. I can release the component. I go back into my schematic and I repeat the data book verify. I select the three capacitors and run the verification. You can see that one of them doesn't pass. This is because the status field does not match. The status has changed. The status stored in the schematic is preliminary. And now the status has changed to release. I remove the particular condition and update my schematic indicating that the newly requested part is now released. I hope we have been able to show you how library management can be easier and smoother. Are you experiencing chaos with your EDA component libraries? Here at Trilogic, we have decades of experience working with customers to help them bring order out of chaos in their component library challenges. We can do a free review and evaluation of your current library management and design process. Make sure to visit us at www.trilogic.com. Thank you.